This is Mon Health Talk, a weekly program focusing on the dedicated physicians, nurses, and staff at Mon Health, the region's premier community hospital system. People with skillful hands and bright minds using state of the art technology. We don't just practice medicine, we care for people like family. That's why at Mon Health you can feel the difference. Once again, welcome to this edition of Mon Health Talk. Good morning. Welcome into the program. I'm Dave Wilson. Glad you could be part of the show today. Our guest is Dr. Morgan Lyons, cardiology. And of course, February is heart month, and we're going to focus in on cardiac telemedicine this morning. But uh, first of all, please welcome Dr. Morgan Lyons to the program. Dr. Morgan Lyons, uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. Appreciate you taking some time. We'll get into talking about cardiac uh, telemedicine here in just a few moments. But uh, before we begin, we'd like to know a little bit more about you. So uh, give us a little bit about uh, your background, where you're from, where'd you go to school, and uh, how you ended up with Mon Health. Yeah, I'm a local boy. I'm originally from Philippi, uh, Philippi, West Virginia, a little tiny town of 3,000, first land battle of the Civil War, and until recently the home of Alderson Brothers College. I graduated from Philip Barber in 1970, went on to WVU and graduated in biology in 1974, then to WVU Medical School, where I did a double residency in medicine and psychiatry uh, through 78-82. And then I did a cardiology fellowship uh, from 82 to 84, and I've been with Mon Health Cardiology from 1984 to currently. I practice cardiology currently. Uh, my mentor at WVU was Dr. Dan, uh, and as part of my cardiology, uh, uh, my cardiology continuation, I did research in clot buster therapy, um, much like Dr. Bingy does clot bus- busting for pulmonary arteries. I did clot busting for coronary arteries in small towns who didn't have a cath lab. So, what? Uh, or how did you realize that you wanted? cardiology to be your specialty and you would spend the next several decades practicing what was that uh, how was that decision made well i always enjoyed learning about hearts as a second year medical student i was introduced to to cardiology by dr william neal a pediatric cardiologist as a fourth year dr herbert warden sent me to study at st paul ramsey with dr edwards a ward now world renowned cardiac pathologist I then returned to do residency and never really lost the love for starting heart, studying hearts because heart disease is the number one killer among men and women. And a heart's kind of like a car engine. Um, it has an electrical section and a plumbing section. Of course, I'm a plumber. We have electricians as well. Some people say it's like a home with wiring and plumbing as well. So I just love that concept and have always started hearts and been part of heart disease since. Talking to uh, Dr. Morgan Lyons this morning, uh, cardiology. Of course, February is heart health, uh, is heart month. So uh, cardiac telemedicine. I don't know if I thought about those two words together. So kind of give me the broad overview of what cardiac telemedicine is all about. Sure, absolutely. Well, while I enjoy seeing patients in person, there's no question I love that. That's why I've done it all my life. Both in Morgantown, Elkins, Fairmont, McHenry, Maryland, I have offices, all those four places. But I've also been expanding my horizons with telemedicine. And telemedicine is being able to see the patient on a screen at a remote location, locations that would not have a cardiologist locally. Examples are uh, Wood County, for uh, there's a division of Parkersburg that doesn't have cardiology on site, and many Hamilton and Grantsville, a tiny little place in Calhoun County. We offer cardiology in other on-site locations, including Stonewall Jackson and, and Weston and Preston Memorial and Kingwood, but we're experimenting with different locations for telemedicine. We found it to be very helpful to patients in those areas. It lets us reach we're hoping that telemedicine can also allow us to reach other communities. We're looking for similar opportunities in other locations. So for, te- oh, go, go, go. finish your thought. No, no. I was going to say, in, in telemedicine, you can, 
you actually see the patient, you actually see the patient and talk to them directly. And and they see you. So it's a very personal connection. You see their family member who comes with them. Um, it's it's a very useful thing. The nurse gets the patient ready. Uh, they they get some background on the patient, all that sort of thing. So it's not like we're going in blind. Um, and, it, and it really helps a lot to have those patients prepared by our nursing staff. So when we're talking about a cardiac telemedicine, having a cardiac uh, telemedicine appointment, uh, will I still go to maybe my local physician's office, the local clinic, and that way, like you said, uh, you see a nurse, you're prepped, and then we'll join you virtually? How, how does this appointment work? Okay, we actually have places set up in these two locations for the patients to come to to actually do the telemedicine because the average doctor's office isn't, isn't equipped to be able to make that telemedicine contact. So we have special locations near the doctor's offices that allow us to do this. And so patients don't have to travel very far. For example, if you're coming from Calhoun County, where we have a location at Minnie Hamilton, all the way to Morgantown, that's a pretty big trip. <laughs> but yet we can see that patient. And if the patient needs further care, or further evaluation that requires going to the cath lab or doing something uh, really extensive, we can certainly arrange that. But most of the testing we do is available in locations close to the patient. For example, stress tests, uh, Holter monitors, which are heart rhythm monitors, uh, perhaps echocardiography, which is an ultrasound of the heart. Many of these tests are available to the patient much closer to home, and we can look at that at a distance. You know, uh, telemedicine really took off during the pandemic, a lot of that out of necessity, uh, obviously with, uh, with COVID, but um, was that already in development uh, coming along and just kind of got accelerated under the pan- uh, during the pandemic? Yes. Telemedicine has been something we've thought about for quite some time because of rural communities, particularly in a, in a state like West Virginia, where you have multiple small communities who really are at a distance from the major uh, cardiac centers. And, you know, the nice thing about telemedicine, you not only speak with the patient directly, you not only see the patient in a, in a video camera uh, situation, but you also have a special stethoscope allows me to listen to their heart, their lungs, their neck arteries. And then I can sit down with a patient after the formal process and speak with them about what I think and review my thoughts about their condition and set up testing that would be appropriate for their situation. Uh, Hang on. Go back. I didn't realize that. So there's actually a a special instrument, a special uh, stethoscope, so you can – this isn't just talking over Zoom. You can actually listen to the patient's heart. You can listen to the, the, the rhythms. I didn't realize that. That's that's pretty cool, yeah. for lack of a better it, it word. Is, it is it is cool. They It's actually, uh, they plug it into a special USB port, and the, the stethoscope is very sensitive, and the, we have a nurse, a trained nurse at the facility, who puts the stethoscope in the appropriate places. And if I'm not hearing it just perfectly, I have her adjust the location because everybody's a little different. Mm -hmm. Some patients' hearts are slightly different locations than others. But we listen until we hear the heart clearly. We just the other day, I heard a heart murmur from a new heart murmur in a patient who had uh, aortic stenosis. That's a narrowing of the valve going out of the heart. That had never been previously diagnosed. And we were able to make that diagnosis via telemedicine. You know, and you've kind of you've kind of answered this question already, but the benefit to the patient, like you said, um, for someone who's living, you know, in a very rural area of state, coming from Calhoun County, or, or maybe, uh, you know, might live all the way over in Terra Alta or over on the eastern side of Preston County, getting to Morgantown for a cardiology appointment may not always be practical, and here you're able to diagnose something that previously no, that the patient didn't know about and and 
it possibly save somebody's life through that diagnosis, right? Absolutely, absolutely, because not only do we talk about the valve disease that we just discussed, but also chest pain. Chest pain uh, doesn't always present itself so dramatically that the patient immediately goes to a uh, heart specialty center. Many times, the, the patient's family physician picks up on differences. They know the patient very well. They know the patient's not breathing properly. They know the patient's not having the same activity level they had previously. There are many things that lead to figuring out that a patient has coronary artery disease or blocked arteries. And of course, that's our specialty. We, we certainly specialize in fixing uh, blocked arteries, but we do other things as well, like valvular heart disease, heart weakness from viruses, things like that called a cardiomyopathy which are things that we also look at. So, yes, there are a lot of different things we do in cardiology, and we have electrical specialists as well. As I pointed out earlier, the three of my partners are electrical specialists who simply deal with heart rhythm. And we work together as electricians and plumbers to get the heart tuned up. Talking to Dr. Morgan Lyons, cardiology with Mon Health. Of course, February is Heart Month, and we will continue our conversation After this quick break, you're listening to Mon Health Talk on WAJR. Now back to Mon Health Talk, a discussion of the issues, people, and procedures in healthcare today. If you have a question for one of our healthcare guests, call now at 304-296-0041. Our guest this morning is Dr. Morgan Lyons, cardiology with Mon Health. Of course, February is Heart Month. And uh, Dr. Lyons, how would a patient set up or schedule a cardiac telemedicine appointment? They simply call any one of our offices, and uh, we have offices in multiple locations, all the ones we know that we talked about previously. Call any one of our offices, and they can make that appointment for them. What have been patient reviews? Have you talked to patients, asked about the experience? What are they saying about the, uh, the telemedicine appointments? Yes, I've done it long enough now that I've had some repeat patients, and they really like the idea. They like the fact that they can see a cardiologist and not have to travel a long distance, uh, that we could offer this service to people in smaller communities uh, where they normally see their regular doctor. Uh, It's important to patients to be able to stay close to home uh, and not have to travel long distances. It decreases the stress of the entire situation and patients are more likely to communicate their concerns and fears. You know, I was reading another article this morning about uh, small, smaller hospitals and the, the lack of availability or the lack of health care that's available to folks who live in rural areas, and there are a lot of reasons why. And, and this, is, this is going to be more of a statement than a question to you, Doc, but uh, – Thinking outside the box, doing things a little bit differently or finding innovative and new ways to see patients and diagnose uh, ailments, uh, that, that's what we have to do to reach these rural areas, and this is, this is a prime example of that, in my opinion. Yes, there's no reason we couldn't set this sort of thing up in any small community. My community of Philippi, for example, where I grew up, I mean, we could certainly set something up there. It doesn't take much to do this. It's simply a computer screen and uh, a little uh, televideo equipment, and it could be set up with any office in any place. And, in fact, we could do it out of a primary care office if we needed to uh, because if there's nothing else available. But certainly the primary care doctors work very, very well with us, and uh, we always stress things that are important to patients. For example, um, There are many things you can't change if you're a heart patient. You can't change your genetics. You can't change who you were born to. But you can change things like getting an ideal body weight, uh, maintaining good physical activity, trying to keep your blood pressure under control, such as less than 130 over 70, or if you have multiple risk factors, less than 120 over 80. If you have cholesterol problem. Cholesterol is equally half of the problem if you don't have diabetes. 
And an LDL cholesterol less than 70 is good for people with multiple risk factors. Or if they have a family history and a history of coronary disease less than 55. Many patients don't know that when we first see us. Finally, diabetes. And diabetes is something that everybody knows about. The AHA and ACC give us guidelines for taking care of cholesterol, but diabetes is generally cared for by endocrinology or, or diabetic specialists. But every family practitioner helps take care of diabetes as well. And that's something that's very important, getting the hemoglobin and A1C under control. So certainly all of these things are important to heart patients, and they all happen in small communities just like the one I grew up in. You know, I've had the opportunity to speak to cardiologists like yourself and pulmonologists and surgeons and uh, LPN, all the above uh, while doing this show. And if I've only learned one thing, and it might be two things I've learned, but uh, the key to a lot of things, whether it's heart-related or just general health, uh, quit smoking or don't ever start, exercise, watch your diet, and that is going to go a long way to helping a lot of things. And I would say that's probably, and you can correct me here if I'm making too broad of a generalization, but uh, might be especially true when it comes to heart health. Watch your diet, don't smoke, don't start, or and uh, get out and get some exercise. Certainly. We always talk about smoking cessation in addition to the other things we just mentioned. Uh, we always talk about smoking cessation if patients are smoker. Most of the patients, by the time they get to, by the time they get to me, have either tried to stop or have stopped. But we still have a few people who are having difficulty. We have different approaches to how they can do that. Uh, some unique approaches in stopping smoking, more than just taking a, a medication or just putting the package of cigarettes down, which is very tough because smoking is very addictive. Uh, the chemicals they put in cigarettes were designed to be addictive and are addictive, and so patients have a very difficulty, difficult time stopping. So we have a couple unique approaches to doing that. I specifically counsel patients on that. Every day I see a patient who remains to be a smoker, and I've had multiple patients stop smoking over time with that approach. Our guest this morning, Dr. Mark, uh, Morgan Lyons, cardiology with Mon Health. You, of course, can get more information by going to the Mon Health website, monhealth.com slash heart. February is heart month. And Dr. Lyons, I appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with us this morning. No problem. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate it very much.